Someday, you and I'll have the privilege of being able to go and live in that wonderful land beyond. And how wonderful and how grateful we are that provisions have been made by the creator of the universe for us to live eternally in a place called heaven. And uh, I hope that we're working and serving the Lord. I know that we don't get there by performance. It's like I've told you before, uh, when Paul addresses the church at Corinth or at Rome, he addresses them as the saints of God. And we're not saints by performance, but by birth, by being born again into the family of Almighty God. But you know, when a person is baptized, he makes the decision to start honoring God and serving God based on his terms. You know, when you go down to the bank and you make a loan, and of course, very few people want to make loans these days with interest rates so high, and it looks like the Fed has uh, raised the uh, uh, prime one more time, and it looks like they may continue to do that until they, as they say, get inflation in check. Now, whether it's going to happen or not, I don't know. But I know one thing, that if you go down to the bank or a lending institution, you actually borrow that money based on their terms, not your own. If you buy a car, you purchase that car on the terms of the lending agency and not based on what you think. You know, when you become a child of God, you actually make a contract with God. It is a contract with God. Now, you can call it what you want to. It's a contract. You can call it a commitment. Jesus, in the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew, said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, the cross he's talking about is not the cross of Jesus, but he talks about us picking up our cross. And that is that we die to sin. You know, a man who becomes a Christian is a dead man in one sense. He is dead to sin, Romans chapter 6. He no longer has rights, <laughs> but we live under the lordship of Jesus Christ, and we function and we live our lives based on his terms. And in reality, it is the only life that is worth living. There is no life without Jesus Christ our Lord. You've heard people say, well, we ought to be able to live our life based on our terms. Or I've heard people even tell other people, if it makes you feel good, go ahead and do it. Or live life on your own terms. That may be what man says, but it certainly is not what God says. God says that we're to live on his terms. And if we want to be successful in life, you have to operate and function on the terms of God. And what I mean by the terms of God, I'm talking about the commandments of the Lord. Whatever God has commanded us, I want to do that because I want to live within the framework of his terms and the contract that I make with Christ. When I am baptized and when I am born into God's family, essentially what I'm saying is, God, here I am at your disposal. I want to live my life according to the dictates of your eternal word. But there is a big difference between the terms of God and the terms of men. The terms of men do not embrace the terms of God. Many people think that you just go through life and get all the gusto and live life the way you want to. Doesn't matter who it hurts. Doesn't, doesn't matter what you do to get where you are. That's the teaching of the world. And the Bible says that we're not to live like the world. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In James 1 and verse 19, God's servant said, Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Now, that's not just a good admonition. That comes from holy inspiration of God himself. It is, it's not just a great philosophy by which we live or a great theology that we take to heart, but it is something that we do because of our commitment unto Christ. 
Did you know that the word listen, and I, I really think this is very interesting, that the word listen contains the same letters as the word silent. Isn't that amazing? Listen and be silent. Now, there are some people who absolutely refuse to do the will of God. But what does it mean when we say let's live on God's terms? It means that we take and we seek good advice. Many times we seek advice from the wrong place. Proverbs 12 and 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is one who listens to counsel. You know, when you begin to think that you know it all and you have it all, uh, you know, in check and you have a handle on everything in life, then, hey, you probably don't. You probably don't. We have to admit our own weaknesses. When we talk about taking good advice, we have to admit that we are weak in a lot of places. A lot of people don't want to acknowledge their weakness. The Apostle Paul said one time, when I think that I'm strong, he said, therein am I weak. And where I am weak, sometimes I really am strong. But a lot of times, people do not want to admit their weaknesses in life. We all have them. We have them physically. But the real danger is having spiritual weaknesses. Paul said one time that people who partake of the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and uh, they do it without discerning the Lord's body, they are sick and weakly. Proverbs 15 and verse 5 says, A fool rejects his father's discipline, but he who regards reproof is sensible. You know, there's so many statements found in the book of Proverbs that really are statements of just everyday life. Taking advice not only from those whom you deem to be wise and those who have lived. You know, I have learned through life and I, uh, they have a young preacher actually uh, up at DeKalb and uh, you know, we were having uh, the evening meal with him on Wednesday night, and he asked me, he said, Brother Manuel, he said, you've been in Palestine and the church there for the last 50 years, and he asked me the question. He said, what would you offer to a young preacher who is seeking advice? I would say, first of all, I would tell you to stay in the Word of God. Make sure that what you are proclaiming is from God and not from men. And make sure that you do not give up, that you don't acquiesce. You just keep on going. You just keep on preaching the word of God. And never, ever give up. He had a wonderful family, four young children. And those children listened to him. And when I was preparing this lesson, actually before I went there, I didn't know all of that. But you know, we all have to take advice. It is only a fool who is unwilling to take advice. Now, advice is something that we all have to weigh. If it's good advice, you take it. If it's bad advice, you don't take it. You don't take advice from a fool, but you take advice from someone who is worthy. You don't have to learn the hard way. When you talk about living on God's terms, sometimes people say, well, you know, you just have to go through life and experience all these things, and, and then you'll learn. You know what? You don't have to experience many of the things that people go through in life. You don't have to learn the hard way. When I was a young preacher, I sought counsel from older ministers, and... Um, I'm still seeking counsel from older ministers. And uh, I appreciate what they have said to me and what they have given in terms of advice uh, through the years. Proverbs 16, 22 says, Understanding is a fountain of life to one who has it, but the discipline of fools is folly. Isn't that a sad thing? When you really stop and think about what James says, he says, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. And he who brings trouble on his family will inherit only wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise. Proverbs 11 and verse 29. 
I like Proverbs 19, 20. It says, get, and this is from the easy-to-read version, get all of the advice and instruction that you can so you will be wise the rest of your life. Now, that's inspiration from God. Sometimes people think they know it all, and I don't need advice, and the way of man is not in himself. Jeremiah 10 and verse 23 says, that's why I said we all need advice. And you need to seek advice. Don't wait for people to come up and try to give you advice. Seek it. For the way of man is not in himself, nor is it man to determine his own steps. It is God, and that's why I tell you tonight that we need to live on God's terms. For the Lord is the one who gives wisdom. I want you to notice this over here. That's not just a, a blank space up there. That is the letter I. And God says in Isaiah 48 and verse 17, I lead you where you should go. God leads us. We could avoid many of the pitfalls of life if we were living on the terms of God. There's another term of God, and that is to get rid of anger. Several years ago, but the Jim Davis did a, uh, an exhaustive study on anger and what anger does. We know that Solomon said that anger resteth in the bosom of fools. And, um, you know, we just have to be very, very careful about that. We have to hold our peace for an appropriate time. For Proverbs 12 and 16 says that a fool's anger is known at once. But a prudent man conceals his own dishonor. Don't be careless with your reaction. We spend more time reacting instead of acting. A wise man is cautious and turns away from evil. But a fool is arrogant and careless, and a quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of evil devices is hated. I saw this quote, and I had to put this up here. I decided, here again, Dwight, I wish we could get this one on the side. It's too long. But it's so true, isn't it? Never do something permanently foolish just because you are temporarily upset. How many times do we get upset? Anybody in here never get upset? Anybody in here? That means you're all, you all get upset. We all get upset at times. We say things at times we wish we hadn't said. We do things sometimes we wish we hadn't done. And it's based upon being temporarily upset. And we have to get rid of our anger. And we do it by exercising self-discipline. And when you do, that's how you hold your temper. Proverbs 29 and 11, a fool always loses his temper, but a wise man holds it back. And be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of the fool, Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 9. Don't get in a hurry to get angry. You know, sometimes people get real angry real quick. How many times have you been driving down the highway, maybe, and somebody tailgating you? You get angry? What if the waitress doesn't come with your food in what you consider to be an appropriate time? Do you ever get angry? you ever get upset? What if you ask someone to do something and they don't do it? They tell you they're going to do it, but they don't do it. Does it anger you? Or can you get beyond it? A fool will give full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control, Proverbs 29. And you talk too much. Maybe that's one of our big problems. You know, if you live on God's terms, you watch what you say. You temper what you're going to say. You talk too much, and you're bound to say something wrong. Solomon said, words are like milk. They can never be gathered up again. And it's true, isn't it? 
Proverbs 10 and verse 8, the wise of heart will receive commands, but a babbling fool will be ruined. Sometimes people are so foolish. When I think about anger, I can't help but think about the story many years ago about the man who was leaving Dallas, Texas, and he was going to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he was going on Amtrak. And it was kind of late in the evening, and he went to the porter, and he told the porter, he said, look, he says, I'm, I know we're leaving Dallas, uh, you know, it's kind of early in the evening, really, but he said, I know we're going to get into Chattanooga probably sometime around 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And he said, I have to get off of this train. There is no absolute other way. Absolutely got to get off at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. You make sure that you get me off of this train in Chattanooga. I have a very important meeting at 8 o'clock. It is imperative that you do it. And he walked away, went to sleep on the train. The next morning, he woke up somewhere over in South Carolina. He was fit to be tied. He could chew nails, he was so mad. He went and he grabbed the porter and he, he gave that porter a tongue lashing like you cannot imagine. And I mean, he raked him up and down. And the man walked away. But the conductor saw what was going on. And he walked over to the porter and he said, he said, I'm real sorry about that. He said, I have never seen a man as mad in all of my life. Have you? <laughs> he said, just one. He said, that was a man I put off in Chattanooga last night. <laughs> it's easy for us to get upset. It's easy for us to get mad. Be careful. We'll all do it. You know, I don't care who you are. Anybody says you don't get angry and you don't get mad, you're not being very honest. But the wise of heart will receive the commandments of God. You will intentionally, if you don't live on God's terms, you will intentionally spread slander. You know what slander is? It's lies. Proverbs 10, 18 says, He who conceals hatred has lying lips. And he who spreads slander is a fool. Be slow to speak. Isn't that what James says? Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, but quick to hear. You will only hurt yourself when you are quick to speak. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod for his back. In other words, you're inflicting pain on your own self, but the lips of the wise will protect them. And do not, I like this one, Proverbs 20, 6 and 4. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you will be like him yourself. But now you must put them all away. Anger and wrath. King James Version says clamor, malice, slander, obscene talk. Put all of those away from your mouth, Colossians 3 and verse 8. You ever seen people that had tongues that worked that fast? I have. Preacher told me one time he had a lady come forward and say, Preacher, I've come to lay my tongue on the altar. And he said, you know, ma'am, he said, I don't believe our altar is big enough. <laughs> Sadly to say, there are some people in this world who speak when they ought to be listening. You don't have to speak on every subject, Proverbs 17, 28. Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. Isn't that amazing? And when he closes his lips, he is considered prudent. Sometimes it's better. We always say it's best to bite your tongue. Sometimes it's just best to get rid of those bad things feelings out of your own heart and out of your own mind. Number four, if you want to live on God's terms, you have to put your faith in God. 
and truly begin following God. Proverbs 1 and verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Only trust is misplaced if it is only in ourselves. Proverbs 28 and verse 26. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but he who walks wisely will be delivered. Put your faith in God. Learn from your past mistakes. Sometimes people never learn from past mistakes. Proverbs 26, 11, like the dog that returns to its own vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. And people do it over and over and over again. But God says don't quit. For failure is not final. And never be a prisoner, as we've been talking in our Sunday morning Bible class, never be a prisoner of your past. It was just a lesson, not a lifetime sentence. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool displays his folly. Proverbs 13 and verse 16. I don't know that there's any book in all of the Bible that talks about the folly of man or the foolishness of humankind any more than the book of Proverbs. We must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. We have to act with knowledge by becoming Christians. And here's the real crux of the matter, and here's the real tough one, is start living like one. Start living like a Christian. If I were to ask you tonight, has there been an exhibition of your listening or an exhibition of your speaking? Maybe when you should have been listening. Those of us that are Christians understand full well what we're talking about tonight. And if you're not a Christian, then you need to begin to start serving God and serving him on his terms. And he said, if you want to be a Christian, here are his terms. They're very simple, very plain. Even a child can understand it. Believe in him with all of your heart. Acknowledge him as Lord and Savior, Matthew 10, 32. And make the good confession for the book of Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And with a penitent heart, yield yourself to be immersed or baptized in water for the forgiveness of your sin. That's our lesson tonight. I hope it's helped you in some way. If we can help you further, we invite you to respond right now while we stand and while we sing.